think the biggest challenge is that both cars are so dramatically different. The P2 car has always had a higher aerodynamic load. It was always the DP was very, very fast in a straight line, but not very fast in the corners. And the P2 car was not very fast in a straight line, but fast in the corners. So we've tried to make the DP match that. The biggest thing we've done is we've had a massive increase in downforce. We've accomplished that through putting a new rear wing and then doing a, an aerodynamic device called a diffuser on the back of the DP cars. We've also added some horsepower to them, as well as trying to lighten them up. Everything we're doing on the P2 cars is something that either is a bolt-on or a bolt-off. Something that can be replaced or put back on so that the car can go back to the ACO specifications and compete at Le Mans very, very easily. We've always had a color system in, in the ALMS in the past, and going forward, what we've tried to do is simplify that and basically just having two color schemes. We have a Pro and a Pro-Am class in prototypes, and a Pro and a Pro-Am class in GT. Red is always kind of what we're calling the Pro cars. Blue is always the Pro-Am cars. We've also created a new leader light system, which is actually a number board on the side of the car, a number panel, that will show the actual position that the car's in. Because when we get to Daytona and have 60 or so cars, it's kind of tough to tell who the leader is. We used to have a system like that in ALMS, but now this new system is better because every car has it, and every car will show their actual position. It's not like any other type of racing in the United States, which is great. We've got so many different cars, we've got so many different sounds. The manufacturers have been very supportive of what's going on. They're very happy with what we're doing. They like the approach we're taking. As you can see by the car counts, they're, they're supporting it in more ways than one.